So who gives the instructions to your computer? You might think it's obeying your instructions when really it's obeying somebody else first and you only as much as that company wants it to will let it listen to you. With software there are two possibilities, either the users control the program or the program controls the users. Well, what's Gnu plus Linux? In 1984, I began developing an operating system, which is a free software replacement for Unix. because this software puts the users under somebody's unjust power. So what does it mean for software to respect your freedom? There are four essential freedoms which make the definition of free software. Freedom zero is the freedom to run the program as you wish. Freedom one is the freedom to study the source code and change it so the program does your computing as you wish. Freedom two is the freedom to help others. That's the freedom to redistribute exact copies of the program when you wish. And freedom three is the freedom to contribute to your community. That's the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions to others when you wish. All four freedoms are essential in order for the users to have control over the software they use. And that's what this is about. The idea of GNU was to be a Unix-like system, and the name GNU means GNU's not Unix. So in 1992, we had almost the entire GNU system, but one essential important component was missing. That component is the kernel, which is the program that's the platform on which the other programs run. It allocates the computer's resources to other programs. So in 1992, Mr. Torvalds, who had written a proprietary kernel called Linux, liberated it. At that point, the combination of Linux and the incomplete GNU system made a complete free operating system, achieving the goal that I had announced in 1983. They're gratis, but they're not free software. And price is not as important as freedom. Don't accept gratis as a substitute for respecting your freedom. Mm -hmm.